Hey there, Grimjack here again, episode number 41 of my Agrarian Skies 2 Let's Play series. Okay, so what are we doing today? Um, I have been very, very busy uh, since last episode, and um, what I've decided I'm going to do is make myself a magnum torch for a little surprise that I'm working on, and uh, that is that beast right there and this is very easy to make in general the only hard part really is making the potions uh, especially once you've done all of the uh, grinding once you've got a full setup that is just producing gold and diamonds for you it is absolutely easy once you get your blaze rod now what I've been busy with is the monstrosity is gone uh, I have cleaned that up completely and I did a little bit of subtle automation over here I have uh, because the ritual is going down below and I have witches down below I have an unlimited supply of uh, life essence and that has allowed me to set up a basically a set and forget system for slates so as you can see I have quite a few of all of these slates so I can come in here and I say you're blacklisting the blank slate which means that it will only let through will automatically let through the reinforced slates so I take this stack of stone and it will dump the whole stack in here and it will just keep cooking away at them until what oh <laughs> it would help if I had already started there. <laughs> so I'm going to also blacklist uh, the uh, the stone itself. <laughs> I had basically taken a whole stack of stone and thrown it in here, and it had um, converted everything to blank slates, and I was just whitelisting blank slates. Then I grabbed a stack of the blank slates and then just blacklisted the same black, uh, blank slates. So that was interesting. Now over here, you'll notice there's a little bit of an addition to the farm area. And what I have over here is seeds for wheat. I have lettuce, or sorry, spinach, not lettuce. I have soybeans and I have more spinach. I did a complete automation of Beef Wellington and that was not necessarily a challenge but it was intricate and if you ever looked at my original first post to YouTube about my walkthrough of the original site you saw that I was fully capable of doing scary convoluted uh, wiring and plumbing for automation and I did kind of the same thing here but I tried to keep it as neat as possible and I'll walk you through the steps so the soybean is harvested here and comes out now the key to having a pipe system that everything moves through one direction or another and that's that's exactly what this is everything is connected to the same set of pipes they're just all routed it's a smart routing system because all of the inputs are filtered. So right here, well, let's let's stay focused, Grimjack. All right, so soybean comes out here, drops down to the first press. In the first press, it gets turned from soybean to soy milk. Second press from soy milk to silken tofu and the last press is silken tofu to firm tofu and this will only pump out once there is a spot available to it that's why you see these are just dropping right down into the next one but this one just goes i got nowhere to go so i'm just going to sit right here so that is the tofu from soybeans right here now uh wheat comes out here and goes over to here and the wheat comes in and is ground up into flour and 
will continue to backstock on the wheat here, but the flour won't go anywhere until it has a place to go. And that place to go is back over into here, where it will be ground with, or it will be mixed with, um, oops, wait a second, what have I got here? I got an oops here. This one is looking for wheat. Why do I? That's part of my problem. That's a backup. There we go. Much better. <laughs> I had made an oops. Um, yeah, so the wheat comes into, the flour comes into here, gets mixed with the salt and the water and in the bowl generates dough. The dough gets pumped out over to here. Now, the neat thing about this one, and the big problem I had was that I have only one bottleneck for making my beef wellington, and that is spinach. The spinach is the mitigating factor. I've, that's why I've got two fields of it. It's all 1-1 one, one seeds. I, didn't, I haven't uh, boosted that production yet. And so I am very limited by how much spinach I can produce. So let's uh, see how I address that. If you look at the interface of the cyclic assembler, if you can stop drifting so much, <laughs> if you look at it, you see how I've got multiple colors here. So I have, on the back side, I have a filter that is letting in mushrooms, firm tofu, and dough, all of which I have plenty of. On the left side is the green side. The only thing allowed in there is spinach. So every single time a spinach comes in, it's going to immediately get processed into Wellington and then pumped out into the barrel. But on the back side, you have the... Like I said, the dough, the firm tofu, and the mushroom. So those will always pump in as soon as there's an open spot available. And the mushroom is coming from my barrel up here. You can be, use either red or brown mushrooms. <clears throat> but I'm just using it off of one because I really don't feel like setting up two different recipes or two different uh, cyclic assemblers. I also put void upgrades on both of those barrels so that I can keep this running and have basically the endless supply of brown mushrooms. Uh, let's see what else is going on here. I do have this set and I haven't yet to actually successfully see it work or test because it hasn't been running that long. I did a uh, Flintmatic cyclic assembler. So all of these, everything that you see is controlled by filters. So my filter right here will only allow in a fully repaired flint matic. And as soon as a matic goes dead, as it were, it drops down into there, gets pulled out. Nothing over there is whitelisted to allow a matic to come in. But this one right here is got uh, ignore metadata and it will take any flint matic. So a fully dead flint matic will go into here and be repaired. It may not repair fully, but it will still be pumped, pushed back out, go back out into the system and come back around to the only place that will allow a non-fully repaired Flintmatic. Then it will pr repair again, at which point it will be fully repaired and it will go to whichever... Um, the one thing it may, I may run into is it may send the fully repaired Matic into an inventory that already has one. So I may have to keep an eye out for that. Let's see, what else have I done? Um, oh, um, yeah, let's take a quick peek in here just because I haven't looked in a little while. Uh, nothing is happening. It's because I turned it off. That'll slow things down. Uh, <laughs> all right, then. Uh, let's see. What else is going on here? That's been primarily what I focused on. Cleaning up the mess. Um, getting extra slates done. 
and getting my Beef Wellington automated. So I basically started recording about three minutes after finalizing my belief, beef, my, my belief, my belief, Wellington, my Beef Wellington system. And as you saw, when I first turned it on, it was at 42. Now it's at 63. <laughs> All righty then. That'll work. Let's eat something. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. Put the rest back. Leftovers for later. Okay, so um, as you can see, that huge stack of stone has now converted into blank slates and will slowly be turned into reinforced slates. And the next thing I will do is do a stack of imbued slates and then a stack of demonic slates. Like I said, as long as those 15 witches are down there um, gleefully suffering for my uh, profit, I will continue to do so. And let's see. Okay, so what did I want the Magnum Torch for? I wanted the Magnum Torch because, actually, I need something else real quick. Why am I so lagging right now? I think I've got some stuff going on my computer that is just slowing me down just a little bit. I apologize for that, but I can't interrupt that at the moment. Unfortunately. Okie dokie. All right. Hello. <laughs> I think the lag is affecting my ability to jump. Jump and fly. There we go. <laughs> All right. So, um, Magnum Torch. Magnum Torch will stifle spawns of mobs within 64 range of where it is placed. So I am sitting here right clicking with the Magnum Torch rather than the <laughs> tape measure. Tape measure is your friend. Um, it allows you to do all kinds of stuff like, uh... oh, and I need one other thing. Poop. Now, one of the most useful blocks in the game, in my mind, especially in a sky block, is the angel block. The angel block is a block that requires almost nothing for materials, except feathers, which I don't seem to have any here. Let's go check with Bob. Hey, Bob. Yeah, Bob's doing a good job. All right. Good job, Bob. All right, so we got... And I got way too many cows. I wish I had, like, a chain gun. You know, apocalypse now, like, you know. Anyhow. <laughs> dokie. So, back to what I was talking about before I got distracted by strafing a herd of cows. Um, the angel block can be placed anywhere um, without having to have an anchor point. And I actually need to keep my tape measure because that will help me. Um, and do I still have that anchor point? I do. There it is, 31. Okay, so I'll come back over here. Um, and you can effectively place the an the angel block anywhere, just like that. Uh, click in space, and it arrives. And that angel block is, by clicking on it again, is uh, 44 south, north south, 51 east west, and three blocks higher than the anchor point over there. But that means that I can put this right there and I am not going to have another spawn within 64 of this Magnum Torch. My normal darkroom spawns will continue without any issue. Anything within a 64 sphere, and the keyword is sphere, because if I were to put this 
um, well, basically 64 above it, 64 below it, 64 east and west and north and south, in a sphere will not spawn. That is relatively important. Um, some people would, I personally am one of the people that thought it was 64 grid spaces out, so that it would be 64 from from 64 at 64 up to the sky, down to the basement, and no spawns. And that just doesn't work that way. So, why do I want a magnum torch right here? Um, I'll let you know. <laughs> I'll be right back. And I'm back. I am just now getting started on throwing my uh, imbued slates. So I want to get, I whitelisted those, threw a stack in there. I did my preparation, and what could this be? This is going to be interesting. <laughs> um, while I was looking at my loot here, I found something very, very interesting. I went, wait a minute, why am I getting oak, oak saplings? I mean, they're not that big a deal. Why am I getting rubber, wait, rubber? Mega rubber sapling. I have 32 mega rubber saplings. So I decided to do a little bit of research. This is a big tree. This is not the sacred rubber sapling that will kill servers. This is the mega rubber sapling, which is not quite as dangerous. And I decided, okay, well, this is in here for a reason. Um, so let's try it. <laughs> um, May not be the smartest decision I've ever made, but um, I ain't no fool. I did not just say, okay, let's do it blindly here. I loaded up a copy of my world. I sprouted one, and it is a beast. Um, this is why I also got this going, because I know that it is so large, and yeah, so... Let's try it here. As long as it doesn't kill my magnum magnum torch, uh, we should be good. Matter of fact, you know what? I'm going to go make an extra magnum torch because I want to. I don't want. I don't want the spawn spawning. Obviously, um, I want to have instant health too. Let's go make an extra. I'll be right back. I'm going to make one more Magnum Torch. Okay, I'm back. And what I didn't show you about the Angel Block is that I made an extra one just for the sake of this. Um, not only can you put it anywhere, but you just a single click on it, and it instantly destroys it and puts it back in your inventory. And it doesn't matter what, what it is. So if you're in the process of falling, and you happen to have one on your inventory, come on, you can fall telling you to fall there we go just throw it down underneath you and it will break your fall now if you don't have fall protection like the wings give you will still take damage from that fall but you will not um, you can have a controlled <laughs> descent or you could if you've got materials you could you know pillar your way back up uh, so that's something also to be aware of and what a value of that is. Let me do a quick sleep through the night and we will plant ourselves a mega tree. So when you plant this tree, <laughs> you need to be prepared that this is big. Uh, like I said, I did do this as an experiment on a copy of this world just so that I knew what it was that I was getting myself into. And um, I'm just going to say, yeah, 
here we go. Now, first of all, it's a reasonable size <laughs> and it creates a little bit of shade. <laughs> and there it is. Um, mm -hmm. So we're going to come up to about here. And I want to put that torch inside, extra torch I made inside the tree because I don't want to leave the uh, Let's see, what, what, why am I at? I'm at Y88. And I'm about halfway up the tree. <laughs> yes, halfway up the tree. There we go. Uh, I made a second torch because I wanted to put it inside. And there we go. And I can go ahead and plug this back up so it doesn't look like that. Okay. So, when I say halfway up... Um, Oh, this is a small one. <laughs> and and note my my amusement when I said this is a small one. <laughs> the last one I did, or the one that I did in my uh, cop world copy, was um, I put it near the tower over here, and the bottom edge of. Yeah, this 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 is a little shorter than the other one because this the the begin of the crown right here was above the tower and the top end of the tree literally was right here underneath the cloud would just barely miss the top edge of the tree. So as you can imagine this is a little bit small. I feel so gypped I got a Pygmy giant tree. <laughs> there you go. Pygmy giant tree. Um, so we have that and I want to throw, well, because of that location there, I am not going to get any spawns on these locations. And that's something I didn't have turned on, but because of the location of that magnum torch, um, there will be no spawns inside this tree and I'm doing it just because it's cool and I found one as a treasure item and I just thought it would look I thought it would look cool so now that I've got it all set up over here and we see we've seen it from over here let's see what it looks like from over here oh yeah that adds just a little character to the platform and all of that from a single block of dirt <laughs> Can you imagine how tightly compressed those roots would actually be? <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, just for the sake of, oops, I was gonna say just for the sake of argument, I'm going to make it look just a little prettier. But uh, <laughs> this is, um, now apparently, while I was doing my research on what the mega tree was, um, apparently the whole purpose for the sacred rubber tree in the first place, the tree that has destroyed servers, was an experiment to prove that the MFR grinder was capable of handling it. And that is exactly what they did. They set this up and they put an MFR grinder right next to it. And it just continued and continued until it was all gone. And that was with, I certainly with the mega tree. Um, but what happened, what would happen is in some cases, the, um, make sure I didn't lose it. There we go. Uh, in some cases, the server would crash after it had been running for a short period of time. So it would have cleared away some of the base here and then moved up. So what they did was they would, and I'm telling you this in case you have this, in case you decide to create this tree and you have this problem. The uh, harvester starts here and then works up. Well, when it gets to about there, it's out of its normal range. Well, if the server crashes or your game crashes, the harvester will not see the tree. So what you have to do is take and pillar up and put that harvester at whatever bottom edge of the tree you're at, give it some power and a place to put its materials and it will go at it again. And so that's basically what you need to do is if you do 
create one of these monstrosities and you want to remove it, the harvester will do it for you, provided you give it enough power and location to put materials. And this is, like I said, this is a small one. <laughs> I almost feel gypped, but at the same time, I'm cool with it. <laughs> that is just a cool tree. So let's see, do I want to put some torches around the base just for appearance sake? Let's see what that looks like. Let's throw you there. Yeah, that kind of looks better than, than it just being completely in shade. Actually, you know what would work real well right now? Is I don't even need to put torches on there. I've got... Wow. Lag on my computer right now is horrible. I may just pause in order to... Uh, let it spend its next 20 minutes finishing what it needs to do. I thought I had more glowstone nooks. Glowstone nooks are perfect for this. And I'll take one of you and cut you up. All right, so let's do uh, grab my saw. I got a saw. I saw, I saw it. There we go. And that. That, those, those, and that is certainly not enough. And we do that, and that, and that. Whoops. Let's see. We take that, do that, do that, do that, and we're set. Okay. And no, no saw job is complete without throwing the saw on the floor. Whoopie doopie. So we take that and we're off to the races. Now, the reason I think that the glowstone nooks will work out real well is because they're tiny and they sit in corners like that. Oh, yeah, I think that's going to work out real well. Oh yeah, that's that's the solution. Because now you can't even tell that I've got lighting in there. So I can get rid of that torch. And it will be... It will be perfect. Alright. Boop. Boop. Make you go away. Whoops. Back corner, I said. Behave. There we go. All right. I'm only going to run off of the inside. Like that. And let's get one in here as well. And there we go. So we should be golden. That looks just amazing to me. Tell me what you think. Tell me if you like it. Uh, if you, if I get enough people saying they don't like it, I'll hook up the that chop that 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 hopper and the chopper and the grinder and the 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 thingy. <laughs> well hook up that harvester and take this puppy down. Um, but to be honest, just about everything would go straight into a QDS because I've got no room for that material. <laughs> and I don't really think I want it. But that is just cool. I am very happy with that. That worked out very well. Okay, that being said, I've actually reached a uh, wrapping up point and gotten to it on time. And... <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope you uh, are a, a tree lover because we now have a really big tree and, and his little dwarf nephew. Um, and let's see also how... Yeah, see, these are just plugging away. As you can see, that even at the higher tiers, this thing is just... Well, let me grab my division sigil. Divin 
divination sigil. Yes, division sigil. Nope, different need. Um, yeah, sixteen eighty three. Yeah, this the 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 witches are doing a great job of keeping me permanently supplied for what I need. I've even thrown a, a couple of uh, speed upgrades on here, and I added in the uh, Rune of Superior Capacity, which is a 10% boost. But, uh, yep, there we go. And there goes my lag. <laughs> it's gone. Uh, oh, yeah, that look even looks good in the dark. Oh, yeah, I like it. Grimjack like. Okie dokies. As usual, thank you very much for coming and watching my episode. And comments below, please, likes, dislikes. Let me know what you think. I am having an ongoing blast doing this. Have yourself a fantastic day and goodbye. What? No comment from the... Oh, that's right. I can't have a guest helping me if he's not spawning. Bye-bye. <laughs>